Welcome back to Amplified. In predictable fashion, the former commander in mischief is now gunning for all the prosecutors who are coming for him. It's no secret there are multiple court cases being built against Donald Trump, many in major cities like New York, Atlanta, and Washington, D.C. The current edition of Politico's The Recast takes on Trump's claims that prosecutors in these cities are, quote, radical, vicious, and racist. He didn't say it outright, but uh, they're also black. Last month, Trump tried to incite his supporters to demonstrate in the cities where prosecutors are making cases against him. But those efforts fell flat. Perhaps his followers are following the fallout from January 6th and will now think twice before marching to defend that man. Joining me now to talk about this and more is Politico correspondent and author of the recast, Bracton Booker. Bracton, welcome back to Amplified. Recently, you had a talk with the first ever elected attorney general of D.C. Talk about what he had to say about the case against Trump. Well, look, he, he basically said that, that Trump is, is dangerous and he, he, he's a provocateur who, who likes to, to basically stir the pot. So he has a um, he has a, a lawsuit going after the the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, two groups that uh, were uh, uh, particularly um, involved with uh, the January sixth insurrection. So it's a civil lawsuit that's that's seemingly trying to bankrupt these these organizations. It's not a criminal suit, but he's mm -hmm. he's certainly working his way towards uh, folks who had conspired to commit violence in the Capitol and also who attacked uh, law law officers uh, in the district. So he's saying that, yes, Trump is, Trump is corrupt. And he's saying that these lawsuits are meant to go after folks that, uh, that follow him to kind of send a message to, to other folks who may want to follow in the January 6th insurrectionist footsteps if they want to hold large scale demonstrations like President, former President Trump was talking about. Mm. It's nice to see that the D.C. Attorney General has some real, some real clout there. Talk about Trump turning the tables on these prosecutors and calling them vicious racists. What's the point of this? Well, we know what the point of this is, right? Uh, he, he is talking to his supporters, trying to drum up uh, some scare tactics, saying that these, you know, black prosecutors are, 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 have too much power, and they're trying to come after him, right? Coming after him for, for wrongdoing. What we see in, in, in Atlanta with Fanny uh, Fanny Willis, who's trying to uh, investigate his in, potential interference with the the Georgia uh, election outcomes. When we have all heard the recording where he was asking the uh, Republican uh, Secretary of State to find eleven thousand some odd votes to to overturn their election results. <laughs> then you have. Uh, Letitia James in, in New York, who's investigating his, his business dealing and his politics, his uh, po political campaigns. And also you have in D.C. that Carl Racine is also uh, investigating how uh, the Trump administration was using the Trump Hotel and kind of inflating its pr uh, prices to kind of almost price gouge and, and, and charge uh, folks who are staying there a lot more money, uh, kind of invol involving the Emoluments Clause trying to say that he was profiting off of being president. So you have all three uh, attorneys general uh, going after uh, dealings with Trump, and Trump is using that as, as, as a wedge to try to drum up support from his, uh, from his base, saying, no, you actually need to go after them and, and try to use this as a, almost a scare tactic to, to say, look, we saw what happened on January 6th. We, we want to promise larger scale demonstrations in these three cities. <laughs> so far, that don't seem to be working for him either. And, you know, this whole idea that it is black people who are coming after him, um, it's quite humorous to me that they happen to be in these positions of power, just as these people are afraid that we're going to be in positions uh, of power. So anyway, along the same line, though, I want to discuss the fact that the Republican National Committee has said that we are persecuting, uh, quote, ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate political discourse. I mean, even Mitch McConnell disagreed with that. What in all the world do you make of the RNC and also Mitch? Because he looked real crazy and hypocritical, too. Well, look, I mean, I, this is going to be a difficult uh, position for Republicans moving forward. I think for, for base elections, when you're looking, when we get into uh, the primary elections 
uh, later on this year, that you're gonna see that, you know, folks who, who took a stand uh, against the January 6th and, and uh, insurrectionists and those who voted to actually uphold uh, the, the fair and free elections that this country had that, not, that secured Biden's victory, I think you're gonna see that, you know, those folks are gonna have a hard time with those Republicans who stood up and said, no, this is like not what we're doing. We're going to uphold the order of law. You're going to have to see that's difficult for a difficult terrain for them to, to continue to go down. Now, the Republican Party is, is certainly fracturing right now because they don't really know which way they want to go. You had the RNC censure the two Republican members of the January 6th committee because they are, in fact, trying to investigate the roots of the insurrection. And you have other folks on the, on the other hand saying like, nah, well, these were just peaceful demonstrations. They did nothing wrong. And therefore, we should not be investigating. It just it it makes no sense. And you're seeing these clear divisions play out in the Republican Party. It's just really interesting where the Republican Party is going to go because I don't think the the future of the Republican Party is is, is certain right now. Uh, no, and I don't think that they know which way is up or which way is down because they're all just trying to appeal to Donald Trump uh, in order to get reelected. I'm curious, what are you hearing there in Washington about the speed and the pace of the prosecutions of the insurrectionists and what's going on with the with the oversight committee? Well, look, I mean, they're they're systematically making making headway, right? They're they're getting more people to uh, to testify behind closed doors with the committee, and you're also seeing that you know. There is more evidence coming out that that Trump uh, alluded to trying to get access to to a lot of these ballot boxes in uh, in different states like Georgia and like Michigan, trying to get uh, had allies to try to get access to these ballots so they could, in theory, miscount some of these votes to give the election to to tr Trump. So I mean I think what we're seeing is this is a systematic uh, investigation playing out. Um, it's not going fast enough for a lot of people because they want to see something happen in an election year and certainly before we get to 2024. But these investigations take a long time. It's just because this this committee has become so politicized, a lot of folks are going to mm -hmm. automatically dismiss whatever the January 6th committee comes up with. But uh, you're, you're seeing a, a systematic yeah. investigation play out here. The DCAG didn't actually name Trump in his lawsuit. Why? Well, you know, his his reasoning was interesting because he has named Trump in other lawsuits, but he said that he was only going after the, the violators, the folks that actually were physically in the Capitol. And I asked him, like, you know, if you're so confident, you've, you've gone after Trump before, you've had some success uh, in going after uh, the, 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 tr the Trump administration on certain things, why would you stop at, at just the the organizing groups that, that were part of the, the insurrection. And what he told me is basically, he's letting the, the DOJ take the lead on this that, are, that has much more uh, a broad authority to investigate the criminality of, uh, of January 6th and try to see if, if they have any investigative tools that can show that Trump had a direct link with uh, the insurrectionists. Uh, with, what Carl Racine was basically telling me, he's only going after the people who committed the assault on law officers in D.C. Mm. and that physically breached the Capitol. I hope he bankrupts them all. Bracton Booker, author of The Recast and Politico National Correspondent, thank you so much for being with me here tonight on Amplified and always appreciate your insights.